Hello, and welcome to the Abundant Life Church, the place where faith and life connect. We're so glad you've chosen to join with us today and our worship experience. This is the time where we pause from doing things around the house and the temptation is to multitask, but this is the time where we choose to set time aside to grow in our spirit, to grow our spirit man. You'll have the opportunity to worship along with us and you'll see the words on the screen. You'll also have an opportunity to connect through prayer. And more importantly, you will also be able to connect through the word. After we hear a message, you will have the opportunity to talk about it and to put in the chat how you are responding and what God may be speaking to you or what you're hearing about the message. We will also have our kids corner today where our children will be able to share with us what they're learning from the word of God. So we invite you to pause, take a moment, and just settle your heart and your mind. Can we pray together? Father, we're grateful for this day and this time where you've allowed us to come together in virtual spaces in worship. We don't take that lightly. We consider it a privilege to be able to lift our hands, to be able to connect by chat, to be able to connect with other believers around the globe. Now we're tuning our ears and our hearts to hear from you, to not only receive, but to give right in the spaces we are at. So we give you permission to speak to us and to have your way in our lives, in our families. We thank you once again, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now join with us in worship. Come on, y'all. Let's, let's give God our worship tonight. Come on, put your hands on it. Say it. 
God like Jehovah. Hey, there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no. Everybody lift it up, sir. There's no God like Jehovah. Nobody like you. There's no God like Jehovah. Nobody like you. There's no God like Jehovah. I can't hear you. There's no God like There's no God. Well, it's wonderful to know that as we come to this uh, time in our service that we can participate together. We can come together around the table of the Lord. This is an opportunity where we can 
experience Christ in this moment of communion. And so as you're getting your elements, if you haven't gotten it yet, and I want you to get some bread and get some juice, uh, your elements that you can have communion commune with us and participate in this wonderful opportunity that where we celebrate the, the resurrection of Christ, his death and burial, and all that he's done for us. And so I'd like to begin by reading a scripture, and our pastor scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 34. I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible, and it says, For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so then, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. And that is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come in under such judgment. And nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather together to eat, you should eat all together, eat all together. And anyone who is hungry should eat something at home so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. But when I come, I will give you further instructions. Here ends the reading of the scripture. As we come together today, we want to pause for a moment and reflect. Because as we're coming before the Lord, he tells us that we need to examine ourselves. Um, just as important that we um, prepare ourselves in a way where we are washing our hands and making sure that we are prepared to eat our meal, we should prepare our hearts to come before the Lord's table. So what I'd like you to do is just pause for a moment to reflect upon your life in your alignment with the kingdom, in your alignment with God's will for your life. If you failed in any way, if you sinned in any way, this is time for you to confess it. This is time for you to ask God for forgiveness. And also this is the time to ask him for healing for your body as well, because he's a healer. And so let's pause for a moment as we prepare ourselves to participate in this time of communion. Well, Father, we're thanking you today, Lord, because you are the Lord, Father, of our lives, and you have given yourself for us. Greater love than, than no one could have for us than you who have laid down your life for us. We come today, Lord, because you have given us access. You have forgiven our sins. So, Father, if we have... Uh, committed sins against you, whether it be sins of omission or sins of commission, we ask your forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for we're able, Lord, to stand in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the ability, Lord, to stand here boldly before your throne today. I pray, Lord, that those who are experiencing afflictions, sickness, ailments, I pray, Lord, that you'll touch their bodies. I pray, Lord, that you'll touch them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Thank you for spiritual vitality, Lord. Pray, Lord, that you revive us, strengthen us where we are weak. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, because as we participate in this time of communion, Father, we know that you, would, you were wounded and you were bruised for our transgressions and our iniquities. Thank you, Lord, that the chastisement of peace was upon you, but Lord, with your stripes in each and every one of them, we are already healed. So, Father, we proclaim your healing. We walk in healing today. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that we have cleansing as well. Cleanse our minds and our consciences from the things that we have done in the past, that we may walk in this forgiveness and freedom 
that we have in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. So as you uh, take your bread, we want to um, remind, remind you that this uh, bread represents the body of Jesus that was broken for us. And as you take this communion, we're going to ask that you just be mindful that Jesus died for you. He was crucified. And that through his stripes that he bore on the cross for you and bore on his body for you, that we can say today we are healed. So let's eat in remembrance of him. Now let us lift our cups before the Lord and we're going to receive of this cup that represents the blood of Jesus. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. As you receive of the cup of the Lord, recognize that this blood cleanses us from our sins, but also gives us the ability to stand in his presence. And we thank God that we can stand in his presence boldly before his throne to pray and to be in a place, in a position where we can receive answers to our prayer. And this is the confidence that we have today because of the blood of Jesus. Let us all drink in remembrance of his shed blood. Well, Father, we're thankful that as we receive of these elements, Lord, we just are praising you for the freedom that we have in Christ. We're thankful, Lord, that you are one, Father, that has freed us and broken the power of sin over our lives. But yet in this moment, we thank you, Lord, for the liberty that we have. And so we stand fast in that liberty where you have set us free, and we refuse to be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. So, Father, thank you for breaking bondages. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for the freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. This is my story. Good morning, everyone. I trust that you're feeling the presence of the Lord right where you are in your home. And uh, we're so excited that God inhabits our praises. And so as we praise him, as we worship him, he comes among us. He gives us his peace. He gives us his joy, his love. And I trust that you're experiencing that right where you are. Today, we'd like to pray. And we know that this is a time that we need to pray for our city. We need to pray for our nation. Um, I don't know what you're feeling right now, but perhaps you are having some real difficult struggles in your life. But we want to pray. We want to ask God's presence, and we want to ask his hand to be upon us. Even as we're in this service, we want to ask him to really touch us, even as we're 
looking and viewing and we're listening and we're also chatting. We just want to ask the Lord to really touch us right where our needs are because he's able to do that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day and thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence, Lord. We are here, Father, because, God, you have a word for us individually and also corporately. So, Father, wherever, Lord, your people are watching, wherever they are viewing today, Father, you know their needs. You know what they desire and what, Father, they uh, need from you. And so, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that today that you would give us our daily bread. We pray, Lord, that in this moment, Father, that as we come to you, that you're going to speak a word of life to us. And uh, in this moment, we, we ask, Lord, that you would make a way, Father, if there's closed doors that we are sensing, Lord, as we're trying to, Lord, advance and move ahead in our lives, we just pray, Lord, that you'll be Jehovah Jireh. Open the doors where the doors are closed. Provide for us where we have not had provision before. And Lord, we're just thankful that you are a God, Father, who cares about our deepest needs. So, Lord, we come to you today thanking you in advance for giving, Lord, what we stand in need of today because, Lord, it's all about you and, Lord, we know we need you. So thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're excited today to bring a wonderful man of God before you in the person of Minister Javon Johnson. Uh, he comes from the Christ Community Christian Center Church in Lakeland, Florida. Uh, if you've seen him and you've heard him uh, many uh, Sundays as he's opened up our worship time and also I've done our announcements as well. And so we're excited today to hear from this young man as he delivers the word of God. So I'm just asking you to open up your heart to receive what the Lord has for you today. God bless you and make you a blessing as the man of God will come to deliver the word. Good morning, Abundant Life. I am excited to be here and to teach the Word of God on this morning. Uh, I don't take it for granted that I get to stand here and to share with you a word that's been given to me, and I hope that it will bless you as well. Uh, I want to say thank you to Bishop Ward and Reverend Dr. Virginia Ward for allowing me to stand here and to just share what the Lord would say to us and would say in this moment and would say in this time. So let's gather in this word and let's connect with one another and let's be participating in the chat box. And even though you're not in the building, I would like a little bit of talk back. So if you can just chat back a fourth and uh, back with one another, that would be great. But uh, we thank God for this opportunity and we thank God for uh, the time to share in the word. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to speak your word. I thank you, Father, for using my mouth to speak what you would have to say. Father, breathe on this word. Speak a rhema word to someone who will listen today. Speak it to me. I am the clay and you are the potter. So mold me as you would want to shape in and to, um, to form, to put out this word that you have given to me. And Father, for your people, may their hearts be open to receive. May their ears be open to hear. May their minds be at rest so that they're able to think and to process what you would have to say to your church. Father, we bless and praise you on today. We thank you for this is the day that you have made and we do rejoice and are glad in it. So Father, calm the winds and the waves that we so see today. Let our hearts breathe on today and let us hear from you. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Well, today we're gonna to be talking about where is your faith? Well, what is your faith in? Where is your faith or what is your faith in? And I'm going to be coming out of the book of Mark, chapter 11, and we're gonna start with verse 12. I'll give you the scripture verses, Mark 11, 12 through 14, and then verses 20 to 25. And this will be out of the English Standard Version. So starting with verse 12, on the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, 
he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. So let's jump down to verse 20. As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. And I want to go back to verse 22. And Jesus answered them, have faith in God. That's a huge statement. Have faith in God. Today, it's so easily uh, to have faith in many other things. We have faith in people. We have faith in situations. But where is our faith really in? What do we find our faith in? Because we're thrown off when situations come and when trials come. And that's why I said in the prayer, Lord, calm the winds and the waves that are around us so that we can see you, so that our faith may be in you. And so on today, I just want to talk about where our faith is at. This word faith is in the Greek, pistin. And for myself, I'm a seminary student, if you didn't know, Bishop mentioned it earlier. Praise God for getting through Greek. Hallelujah. <laughs> but it's exciting to know that the Greek word there means belief or assurance or faithfulness. It means to be assured of something. And particularly in this passage, it means to be assured of a divine presence or of a divine in a deity and a, and a divine presence. So to have faith in God is so very important. You know, here at Abundant Life, we always say this is the place where faith and life connect. It's so important. Our faith is like our lifeline. It's like the blood. If love was our heart, faith is the blood that runs through our veins and runs through our arteries and, and goes through every body part, oxygenating everywhere. It's our lifeline. So it's important that we hold on to that statement, faith and life, because it's our life. They connect. They should connect. Faith should be in our lifestyle. And so what's most important is that this faith this piston, this faith, this belief should be in God. And he will keep your life going if you'll stay with it. I know that Christians today seem to take faith for granted because they think that faith is something that, oh, I can wave it with a magic wand or it'll come to me if I really want it or I can wish it and it'll come to me. But faith doesn't exactly work like that. Say, for instance, you want to drive your car and a a couple days ago, I was battling the snow and uh, I was on my way here and I said, well, Lord, I just believe if I get in this car, I could just turn it on and crank it. I'm a Floridian, so I'm not used to the snow. You have to forgive me. I, I, I said, if I could just crank this car up and I'll just go, I just trust you, God, I can make it. And so I can say that, but it wasn't until I got the shovel, plowed the snow out the way, right? got the snow off the car, rinsed it off a little bit, that I actually started to work out my faith and what I was believing God for to come to the church really happened. That's what faith is. It's acting upon what we believe. And that's the point that you can make in your notes. That's point number one. We can have all of the belief in God. We just trust you. We love you. And that's important. That's so very, very important because he wants our trust. He wants our love, but he also is looking for our faith. And he's not the only one looking for our faith. 
Bishop talked earlier about Satan is looking for our faith as well. He told Peter, I pray that your faith fails not. I don't want the devil to sift you as wheat. And so when we're acting upon what we believe, we're not only praising God in that, but we're telling the enemy, no, you can't have us because this is our faith. This is how we trust God. This is how we show him. This is what we believe. This is how we show others. This is what we believe. Our faith is so important because it's tied to our will in God. God's will for us is to prosper. He wants us to be in good health, 3 John 2. He wants us to be uh, a prosperous even as our soul prospers. And so our faith is so important to that. Remember I said earlier that our faith is our lifeline. If faith is the blood that goes throughout the body, we have to keep it going. We have to keep it exercised. Faith is that much important. So when they come to the fig tree, Jesus says, have faith in God. Because whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Now in this passage, they're coming out of Bethany. They're on the way to the Mount of Olives later on in the, the chapter, in the book. And in between, Jesus is cleansing out the temple. He's just had his triumphal entry. And so Jesus is showing them all of this uh, authority and praise. But the disciples are kind of wary of it because they're like, well, Jesus, everybody's praising you. Everybody's, you know, has their eyes on you. You've cleansed out the temple. You've, you've came into Jerusalem. You've, you've done all of these things. And then this fig tree, you curse this. So Jesus in all of his uh, humanity and also his divinity is showing them his faith. He's showing them this action or this acting upon what he has heard from his father and what he believes. It is not just something that he wants to dominate them with or try to uh, tell them that if you have faith, you can do anything. Well, no, 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 no. Faith is only the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So this faith is only tied to their will and it is only tied to the will of God for them. So what's so important here is that the faith that they had would be able to curse the fig tree, would be able to raise the dead, would be able to make the, the blind man see, because it's tied for the will of God to prosper in. And that's what's so important. And he adds something to it as well. He said, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received. Some of you can say, believe that you're receiving and it will be yours. He adds prayer to this. And a lot of times we want to have faith without prayer. Well, the two go hand in hand, I would submit to you. Prayer has so much importance in our life. Prayer is almost like the footsteps we have to take for the blood to pump and our, and our heart to start going. That's so important. It's, it's tied together. Remember, faith and life is tied together. It's connected. And so he says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you are receiving it, it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, here's the other caveat, forgive. If you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. It's so hard to forgive. Oh, my goodness. So you got to tell me I have to pray and then also have to forgive. Well, it's important to our faith. And if we want to have faith to curse the fig tree in our lives or to tell the mountain to move, we have to abide by these things that are important to it, that will help the blood to going and that will help us act on what we believe. And so I've had my own faith experiences in life. And one of them has been coming to seminary. I think it was last year, it was last year about this time, um, I was, um, well, I was already in seminary, so it was about September of last year. And I was asking God, I said, well, I don't know if I really want to do it. I don't, what, do I have the money to do it? Do I have the time to do it? You know, what, what, what about coming here is going to be so special and important? I'm moving away from home, everything that I've known and everything that I really could see and was really accustomed to and comfortable with. I don't want to 
come up here to New England and have to deal with snow and winter and do everything else? Well, it was a calling for me personally, but it was also tied to my faith. Where was my faith then? My faith was in God. If he told me that this is the path or this is the trail I've got to go in, I've got to have the faith for it, to go in it and to trust him all the way, to pray, believing I've already received all of the resources and the help that I've needed. And then I've got to forgive myself for even thinking, well, God, how are you going to do it? You know, and that's kind of how Abraham's wife was. You, you know, when the angel told her that you will have a child at her age, she was like, well, what does that mean? The faith, the faith to believe. Abraham had the faith to believe God and it was counted to him for righteousness sake. So faith is so important when we want to do things in life that we know is tied to the will of God for us to be a community to grow in. So back to the seminary journey, I come up here and I come to a place that's foreign to me. I don't know many people. I don't know, you know, where am I going to go to, you know, who's going to be my new friends? How, how am I going to go through this? And then I got to take classes and, and take these courses and go through things. But all the while I'm trusting God, I'm walking it out by faith. It's kind of like when I've been taught by uh, my pastor back home, he kind of describes it as walking. So you know how you go heel, toe, heel, toe? Well, Faith, the heel, toe is love, heal the hope, toe is prayer. Faith, hope, love, prayer. Faith, hope, love, prayer. And I had to continue to walk by faith. I had to continue to pray. I had to continue to hope that however you call me to this, this is what I'm going to go in. And this is what I'm going to follow through in. And then I had to love, I had to love, I definitely had to love because it was hard to love someone <laughs> who didn't know me and didn't really uh, understand who I was at the time and wanted to come to this place, you know, but all of these things helped me to walk out my faith, that faith, hope, love, and prayer, and it made life easier. And now I can tell you here in year two, it's a little easier and a little better. And so I'm glad to be at a ministry also that knows that because it's so important that we have this faith, that we have this life. It's important to us. It's not only for us to overcome things and difficult challenges, but it's also for others around us. People ought to see the faith in us as a church, especially in these times. They ought to be seeing faith among believers. They ought to be seeing the assurance of the belief that we have in God, who they cannot see. They can only see us. And we are a representation of Jesus Christ in the earth. And so we must hold on dear to this faith. And so that's point number two. We have to live out our faith. It's designed to be in God, not in our strength and not in our abilities. You know, we can have faith in we have a great mind, we have a great career, we have great jobs, we have all of these things. But is that really where we get our source from? It should be in God. So in order to get anything done in this earth, we have to live by this faith. God wants our faith. He wants our love. He wants to know that we fully depend and trust on him. You know, remember when Peter was trying to walk out on the water? and come to Jesus. They saw Jesus in the distance. And all of these Bible stories, I'm trying to get you to see how all of these things work. You know, the impossible becoming the possible because it is possible. So Jesus, so Jesus comes towards them and Peter tries to get out to walk with him. Right? He goes out and walks at first. He does go. But then he starts to look and he starts to see all these other winds and waves and, and, and they're coming, they're crashing in. And then he falls. And Jesus said, oh, ye of little faith. Well, if Peter hadn't have looked, he actually, well, he was walking on water, right? He was going, he was doing the impossible. Um, but these are the moments and times where we have to stop looking around and seeing there's other things going on. There's other things that are really trying to distract us and get our attention. But if we're looking unto Jesus, the Writer in Hebrews says, the author and finisher of our faith, 
we will be able to do the impossible and we will be able to be the representation on the earth that Jesus Christ is calling us to be. He is our Lord and he wants to know that he has people on the earth that will reach others for him, that will share his love, that will share his hope, that will be built up in prayer. And so I've known about this, this faith ever since I've been growing up. And that's kind of how I've came to this place of seminary because I grew up in church all my life. I was always serving in church. I was always around the church. And even when I wanted to go out and do other things, I find myself back at the church, We're always at faith conferences and doing all of these things. But I really had to get around to where was my faith in? Was it just being involved in the church and going around in the church and being seen? Or was it in God? Because I tell you, when hard times came, I had to remember where my faith was because my life was connected to it. And that's what we say here at Abundant Life. Our faith and our life are connected. And without one, you can't have the other. Your life will be okay. It may be uh, hard even, but without faith, is how is it possible to even go through life and to even uh, uh, throughout situations and different circumstances live a wonderful and a quality life because he wants us to live that kind of life and to live it for him. So I don't take faith to be something that is magical, right? Again, I'm, we're talking about belief or assurance. We're not moved by anything. I remember we said that faith is something that we act on. Faith is something that we know, we come to believe. Finally, faith is our lifestyle. Faith is our lifestyle. It's not something that we just step out onto. Because the moment when uh, Peter stepped out onto water, or he was walking, but he stepped out onto it, had he been living by it all the time, he probably could have went all the way to Jesus, right? But that's what he's showing us, is living by this faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Uh, we have it here in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 through 4. The victory that overcomes the world is even our faith. But even in our faith, we have to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and to know him because he wants to know us. And so in living out this lifestyle, we don't step out onto it. It's not just something that we pick up one day. It's something that we know, that we are assured of. This is our belief. This is what we know. This is what we come to believe. God wants to be our God, and he wants to be someone who can bring people into the assurance of knowing him. And he also wants to be the one that when he calls on you to do something, he wants to know where you have the faith to go and do it. And I know in this time we talk about the coronavirus and the pandemic, and we talk about things that are happening in our land. And it seems as though, why can't we make these things go away? Well, we're not necessarily going to make them dissipate and go away, but we can live through them. We can live by faith. We have the same spirit of faith. And so if we open up our hearts and receive, if we walk this out by faith, hope, love, and prayer, we'll be able to make it to the finish line. We'll be able to show others, encourage and wanting encouraging one another to help them live this life out by faith, even though there are circumstances and challenges that are swallowing us up all around us. We know that we have a God in who we can trust in. We know we have a God who says, when we stand, when we pray, we ought to believe that we receive those things that we are praying for and we'll have them. He wants us to walk it out. He wants us to be in communion with him. So this faith, I mentioned it today. It's something that we have to hold on to. It's something that we must live in. Let's not take it for granted because in our country, we know that we are able to come together and to worship. And even though we're doing it online and we're doing it in different places, we're still able to worship God. In some places, that's not always the case. We see that in the news. That's not always the case that people can live out their Christian faith and abilities in a public manner. So we should not take that for granted. We should be using our faith to help others. We should be using our faith to reach the world for Jesus Christ because that's what 
all of us come together and we become the church, that's when we'll see things change. That's when we'll see things grow and we'll really be in unity into the fullness of the body of Christ. If we all can come together by faith, it would be important to us and we'll grow thereby. So what am I saying in it all? And let me bring this still close. I don't mean faith to be, again, magical or to be something that is wished upon because chances come, chances go. But faith is important to our lifestyle because it shows others who we are. It sets us apart in such a way. And people may come up to you and ask you, well, how are you able to smile, you know, even during um, this time where we find ourselves being in different situations, in different bad places? How do you find yourself still smiling? How do you find yourself still joyous in this? Well, you can open up and say, I have a God who cares for me, who loves me, who wants me to do his will. And I have faith in him that he will see me through this. It's so important because even in the times of despair, and especially in our communities today, when we just saw on the news and, and just saw the, 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 the death of, of Walter Wallace Jr. And we've seen these many tragedies of, of, of black men being killed by police. And we've seen these many tragedies even over in Nigeria uh, with SARS. And we've seen these difficult tragedies in life. And we're saying like, God, why? Why is this? Why can't we just make this go away? Why can't we just destroy all of this? Why can't this be over with? He's calling for our faith. He's calling for us to trust him. He's calling for us to believe in him. Just like the fig tree that was cursed and Peter came back and saw, wow, the fig tree that you curse, it hasn't produced any fruit. He's calling for us to trust him, to live out through these things. Because even when these things come up and when we find ourselves in them, will we will the Lord find faith in us? Will we have faith to believe him and to trust him and to pray for that person who's going through that to encourage them right where they are, right in the middle of crying and grieving over their lost loved one right there? Will he find faith? Will he find us? lifting them up? Will he find us loving them? And will he find us forgiving them? Forgiving whoever committed this trespass to give us. Because remember, Jesus said, our trespasses will be forgiven as well. But will he find the faith in him that will move this mountain, just like they moved the mountain then, that will move this mountain of despair? Will he find faith in us? This is the place where we have to connect. This is the moment we, we have to connect our faith to our life. It's so crucial to us. It's so very crucial because we have a good father who will not change. He will not change. He is immovable. He is outstanding. He is from the beginning to the end. He's the alpha and the omega. He will not change. So will we have faith in him? Will we believe him? Will we trust him? Will we give our all to him? Or will we trust that, well, the system will work itself out? Will we trust that, well, if I take this revenge, will we trust that, oh, you know what? I can do this myself. No, my friend, we've got to have faith in God. We must believe him. We must live out this faith. We must be assured that he is God and that he will see us through even the deepest and the darkest moments. I'm telling you, right here in 2020, we can have faith like never before because we have a God who is solid. We have a God who will never fail us. We have a God who will always be beside us. David said, where can I go from your presence? Even if I make my bed in hell, you're there. You feel like fly to the highest of heights, you're there. So why don't we have faith in him? Let's take our faith out of people that tell us all these different things. They, mean, they probably mean no harm. They probably are intentional. They probably are lifting us up. But we need to have faith in, in the one who will always love us. We love people, but our faith should be in God. Let's take our faith out of our own abilities. 
Yes, let's try to be encouraging. Let's try to think. Let's try to do the things that we are called to do as humans. But let's put our faith in God while we're doing it. He wants to have our faith and he wants to have our trust. I ask you again, where is your faith today? Where is your faith? Will the son of man, when he returns, will he find faith on the earth? You know, Jesus uh, came to the, um, the, the woman who uh, wanted to be healed. And uh, he said, I only came to those uh, of the house of Israel. Well, uh, she said, well, even the dogs get the crumbs, Jesus. Even though she was a Gentile, even the dogs get the crumbs. But see, even in that moment, she used her faith to go after what she wanted. And that was her healing. She used her faith. She used her trust in God to go after what she wanted. Will you use your faith? Where is your faith? Can I pray for you today? Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this moment. I thank you, Father, even for the times where we find ourselves at most deep and at most despair. Father, we will put our faith in you. We will not be moved. We will not be shaken. We will find ourselves trusting you every step of the way. Father, we will walk out by our faith, our hope, our love, and our prayer. Father, in every moment that we find ourselves not wanting to go on, may we trust you. May we grow up to walk by faith and not by sight. May it be connected to our life, God, and how we live. This is the place where we want to live out our faith. We want to be in communion with you. We want to trust you. And so, Father, I thank you. I pray for every person under the sound of my voice, every person listening to this message, that they will have faith in you, that they will remove it out of situations, that they will remove it out of people who may cause them harm or people who won't cause them harm. May they remove it out of people who, who don't even know them, but may they put it back in you, the true and living God. For you are our Father. You want what's best for us. You want to provide for us. You want to love us. You want to give us all that we need. So, Father, may we place our faith in you. May we come to love you even the more. And then the days to come, even after this election and, and whoever is in the White House and whoever is in authority and whoever is, is lording over us or whoever is, is in positions of power. Father, may our still our faith be in you. We won't be moved, God. We won't be moved. We'll trust you every step of the way. And we'll grab our neighbor by the hand and we'll encourage them to live out this faith that you have called us in. We love you, Lord. We trust you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, if you have not received Jesus and you want to, to know him and you want to be in uh, fellowship with him and you want to receive him, I want to pray for you as well. I want to give you this confession to receive Jesus as Lord because he wants to invite you into a family of believers where other people can pray for you, other people can lift you up, other people can, can give you guidance uh, into this kingdom. So I want to pray for you and I also want to lead you in the prayer. So repeat these words after me. Say, Father, I thank you that you gave your son to die for me. I thank you that he rose again and that he's seated at your right hand. I believe that Jesus died from my sins and I receive him now as Lord of my life and as Savior. I thank you, Father, for accepting me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, contact the church here. We'd love to get in contact with you and give you resources. We want to know where is your faith and your faith should be in God. Faith and life connect. Let your faith be in God. God bless you. Wow. Where is your faith? Or what is your faith in? What a word. Thank you, Minister Johnson, for giving us that word and challenging us. The time we're living in right now where there's stuff happening all around us and we're pending an election and we've got global stuff happening. This was an awesome reminder that our faith should be in God. We're going to talk to 
Minister Johnson about it and just ask him a few questions and to dig a little deeper. I encourage you to put your thoughts in the chat and kind of chat along with us and help us to see where you're at as well. So in the first point, he talked about faith lives out its action or faith by action, that we've got to make sure that our faith acts on what it believes. And he talked about how that faith is tied to the will of God. And so I want to ask you a question, Minister Johnson, that sometimes we wonder what, our, what the will of God is for our life. How do we know the pathway that is tied to the will of God for our life so that we can have faith in that? Could you give us some pointers on that? Well, yes, Dr. Ward, I, I think that's so important uh, that we know which path to take where the Lord is calling us to. And there's two places that I found uh, even in the scriptures. Remember when Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, God told him, leave the place where you are and come into a land where I am calling you. And Abraham actually had to believe God. He had to act upon what God was telling him. He didn't know all of the provisions or all of the things that were going to work out in his place and in going into the land where God called, but he left, he went, he took that step and he lived it out. The other place uh, is with Israel. He, Israel, you know, they were in captivity in, in Jeremiah and God tells him, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and to give you a future. And so they had to continue to believe in their God even in the midst of captivity, they had to continue to act upon what God had said because his promises were sure. So I will say that acting on what God has said is always the best policy because remember his promises are sure and he will give you just what you need to carry it out. Well, all right. Well, then your third point, you talked about faith as a lifestyle. Sometimes it's hard to live by faith, but yet, as we heard in your message, we as the just, we are called to live by faith. Can you talk to and speak to the person who might be having some difficulty living by faith and give them some suggestions about how to do that? Well, first, I just want to tell that person to pray. Remember, Jesus said, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have it. I just want to tell that person, remember to pray. Prayer will grow that faith. And when you walk it out heel toe, faith, hope, love, and prayer, it will continue in the way that God has called it to be. So lift your eyes up to, unto him. He is your help. David said he's a very present help in the time of trouble. So I would encourage you to pray, seek God, know his voice, hear from him and then start walking in it. And I promise you the return upon that action of faith, that upon that acting on what you believe, you will come to pass what you have believed him for. Thank you. I don't know about you, but I really loved the heel toe, heel toe, faith, love, hope, and prayer. So as you think about that, the heel toe, faith, love, number one, Number the second heel toe, hope and prayer. Would you put in the chat what heel toe you're working on? Are you working on faith, love, hope, prayer? Maybe you're working on all four. If it's all four, just put in there all four. And we're all going to continue to learn and grow together. Thank you, Minister Johnson. Thank you for where is your faith? And we pray that as we continue to live this out, that our faith is not in ourselves, as he told us at the end. It's not in our abilities. It's not in our bank accounts, but that we put our faith in God. And if that's you, would you just chat? My faith is in God. My faith is in God. God bless you. Stay tuned for Kids Corner. Hello, welcome to Kids Corner. I'm Yvette. And I'm Luke. Today we'll be reading a short story, Jacob Steals Esau's Blessing. But first, let's pray. Thank you, 
Lord for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to pray for you, pray to you. Thank you, Lord, for all the things that you've done for the church. Thank you, Lord, for, um, thank you in advance for everything that you're going to do for the church. May everybody who hears the church service be blessed by it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jacob steals Esau's blessing. In time, Isaac became very old. One day he said to Esau, I want to give you my blessing before I die. Hunt an animal and cook the meat for me. You know I love this. Then I will bless you. But Esau had sold his blessing to Jacob for some soup. Nearby, Rebecca was listening. Quickly, she cooked up some meat. She gave it to Jacob. Take this to your father. He is blind, so pretend that you are Esau. Then you will get the blessing. Jacob did this. Though it was wrong, he stole Esau's blessing. So I have two questions for you, Luke. How did Jacob fool Isaac? Jacob fooled Isaac like pre by pretending like he was Esau. And who helped him steal the blessing? His mother, Rebecca. Um, what did you learn from this story? There's so much to learn from this story, but I think the most um, impressionable one to me is that being deceitful, dishonest, has consequences that can affect us for a very long time. Well, thank you for joining us on Kin's Corner. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Now we've come to the place where we can share together in our giving. In Hebrews, we're instructed to not forget to give and to share with others, because in doing so, God is pleased with those sacrifices. We want to thank you for what you've given thus far, and for those of you that are not able to give today, we're blessing you anyway, and we say thank you anyway. For those of you that are able to give, there are some instructions as to how you can do so. First of all, you can use your cell phone by texting the word GIVE to 855-952-1023. This is our new number, so please make note of it. You can also give using our new Tithely platform. For more information or to give online, you can go to alccambridge.org slash give. And as always, you can mail your giving to Abundant Life Church, 47 Howard Street, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 02139. Can we pray together and bless the offering? Father, we're grateful for the opportunity to have income. We're grateful for jobs. And we pray for those that are still searching or in this pandemic who have been furloughed or laid off. We pray for provision. We thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. You do provide for us in ways that we sometimes don't understand. We pray even now for those of us that do have tithes and offerings and resources to give to your kingdom work, to the work of blessing others. We pray that you would bless these offerings. May they be multiplied. May they be used for the lifting up of your kingdom. May they be used to bless those who are in need. And in doing so, we pray that as Hebrews tells us that you will be pleased with our offerings and our gifts today. We bless you. We thank you. We praise you for being a good, good father to us. And we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our announcements for this week are as follows. We have a new feature, a newsletter that will come out on Fridays. It's published for members and guests to read and to keep updated on the ways to connect and to fellowship with Abundant Life Church. To subscribe to the newsletter, simply go to alccambridge.org and scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll see sign up for our newsletter. Enter your email and click submit. Or you can simply email our office at info at alccamb.org and we'll be happy to assist you. Applications for the ALC Food Assistance Program are still being accepted. Simply go to alccambridge.org slash cares and fill out an application. Our ALC app is a great way to stay connected while on the go. If you haven't downloaded the app yet, please go to alccambridge.org and find out how to download the app and experience all of its wonderful features. Abundant Life Church prays every day. Yes, seven days a week of prayer. Start your week off with an early morning prayer Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. The phone number is on your screen. Then join us for Saturday morning prayer from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then finally, each Sunday, immediately following service, you will have the opportunity to pray one-on-one with one of our prayer leaders. The line is open for just 30 minutes, so please be sure to get right on. The link and the phone numbers are on the screen and will appear on our website and chat box on Sunday mornings. For any other additional information or questions, simply email us at info at alccamb.org. Well, I want to thank you so much for being a part of Be Law Lives on Tuesday evenings. And so many of you have been uh, chatting with us and letting us know that you appreciate uh, what we've been sharing on Be Law Lives on Tuesday evenings. The goal of Be Law Lives is simply this, to educate, to encourage, and to inspire you. And I trust that as you uh, look in the archives, if you've missed any of them, Um, you can find some information there that will really be helpful and encouraging to you. But this Tuesday night, we are not going to be doing a Be Law Live because of our time of election. And as you know, that elections, uh, especially this one, is a really, really strategic election. And we want you to be a part of this election time and just letting your voice be heard by casting your vote. Please pray throughout the process. Even if you have cast your vote already, Please pray through this process. I trust that as God would speak to you in pray, in prayer, and uh, even this week as we are praying for peace and justice, we want you to be a part of our times of prayer and praying in your, your own private time for our country and for our nation, that God would bring healing, bring restoration, that he will bring uh, us together and unify us as a nation. And so we look forward to seeing you the week after And uh, as we're going forward and be our lives, I trust that you will be inspired and encouraged. Share with someone and let them know that uh, something is on there that will really help them to live life to the fullest. God bless you and make you a blessing. We play a key role in both our own future and the future of those around us. Regardless of your age, gender, race, or financial situation, no matter who you are or how you define yourself, on election day, Each one of us can have an impact on on all of us. On Tuesday, November 3rd, in addition to a vote for president, we elect U.S. and state senators and representatives, as well as some local officials. These elected officials determine policy that affects our everyday lives. So do your research. And know the candidates. And make sure you are registered to vote. Then whether early, absentee, or in person on election day, we want you to vote. We're We're casting casting our ballots. Please join us. Well, today, what a word that we had from the Lord today and our worship experience is so powerful that we are 
just in this presence of the Lord in our communion time as well. And uh, just want to remind you that make sure that you are putting your faith in Christ, putting your faith in the Lord. And, and you, don't, you don't want to put your faith in other things as the word was teaching us today. You want to put your faith in God. So I'd like to bless you as we go. Would you just lift your palms to heaven as we pray? Father, we thank you for this opportunity and we thank you, Lord, that we have been in your presence. Thank you, Lord, that you have encouraged us, Lord, to have faith in you. Lord, we pray, Lord, that as we go throughout this week, that we go throughout this period, as we go throughout this uh, time we're about to elect a new president, Lord, we want to have faith in you. And Lord, we just want to have faith that God, that you would begin to do some incredible things in our world, incredible things, Lord, in our nation to bring restoration, to bring healing, and Lord, to, to just bring, Father, a, a unity, Father, where there's been so, many, so much division. And so, Lord, I commend your people to God. I pray that you bless them. And so, Lord, we thank you for blessing. We thank you for keeping. We thank you, Lord, for allowing your face to shine upon us. We pray, Lord, that you would, Lord, cause us to be in peace and cause us to experience your shalom. May, oh God, Father, you surround us with your blessing. Surround our families with your blessing. And Father, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of our worship experience here at Abundant Life Church, where faith and life connect. <music>